Continuing with our product costing presentations, let's look at the material master data views. As we saw in our earlier presentations, that we'll be creating these following materials. The raw materials are listed here, the packaging materials are listed here, and the finished goods are listed here. All these have to be created as individual material master data. And when you're creating the material master data, it's important that you select the right material type. Now there are many views available in the material master data as you can see it's in different tabs so all of these tabs i'm just calling it as views so this is the basic data one view tab then the basic data two classification and so on now there are many views available however we'll only look at a select few which is relevant to our financial accounting and management accounting reports and analysis so let's look at the first view, the basic data view. Now this is a compulsory view. Now here we specify the description of that material. By default, this is a ID given by the system because of the internal numbering. And we can specify a description over here for the material. And then you need to specify a base unit of measure. So this is a unit where each of this material is going to be valued at. So I've just specified as vanilla muffin over here. That's my finished goods material. And I'm going to call this each. So the units are going to be each. One vanilla muffin, two vanilla muffin, and so on. So it's going to be unit of each, so EA. This is the most common unit of measure. Then I can use a material group to identify where this material is going to be linked to because there can be several different type of materials created, but they can all be classified under one material group or two material groups. Uh, this is useful because, for example, I can specify a group called muffins. So when I have different varieties of muffins like chocolate muffins, blueberry muffins, and so on, I can classify all of them under one material group called muffins. Similarly, you can do this for your raw materials and packaged good materials also. Then you have another material group called external material group. Again, this is another additional field which you can use for reporting purposes. The product hierarchy is also useful if you want to create product level hierarchies for again for analysis reporting such as the COPA profitability analysis reporting. For example, if I'm producing like sun silk coconut shampoo, then I can give it the lowest level hierarchy as 1002010, just an ID number over here. Then at top level, I can have the brand over here as Sun Silk. Then at the highest node, I can call it as Shampoo. So under my Shampoo categories, I can have Sun Silk. Then I can have Sun Silk Coconut. So you can have different levels of product hierarchy. So you can have product hierarchy 1, product hierarchy 2. All those fields you can get populated through the system. But the top main view, you can just specify the high level product hierarchy view. And then later you can link them to the higher levels. Again, this is getting a bit more advanced, which is more related to the uh, COPA profitability analysis module. However, just to give a background, that you have this option of linking the material master data to a product hierarchy. Then there are some more other views, other fields available, but we'll just focus on these three for now. Another tab in the material master data is the MRP views. So you have MRP tabs for MRP1, MRP2, MRP3, and MRP4. So this tab is for MRP1. And here again, this basic unit of measure is derived from the basic data field, so it just comes up over here. Now all these MRP fields are related to a plant. Now that information is just hidden over here because I've scrolled down the menu bar down. But all the MRP views are related to one specific plant. So here you can see this is the general data. You can specify your purchasing group and so on. And you also have plant specific material status. So this field you can specify whether this material for this particular plant is blocked for certain different type of transactions. But we're not going to block any of these uh, materials. So we're just going to leave that blank. Usually these are all just left blank. Then there's something called the MRP procedure. This is for materials requirement planning. That is the MRP. So for MRP procedure, you can specify different set of fields information over here, reorder point, when to reorder and so on. Again, this is very much going out of scope for our uh, module, that's a CEO module. This is very much related to the logistics module. But this MRP type sometimes becomes a mandatory field. So I have chosen ND, which is for no planning. Then you can specify some other things like lot size, minimum lot size, and so on. You also have the option of specifying an assembly scrap. Sometimes when you produce one item, you might have scrapping which occurs. So you can specify this scrapping percentage also. And all the other information also you can specify in this MRP1 view. But for this presentation, I'm just going to give it to the minimum information required. Another important view is the MRP2 view. So you can see here the 
the material with along with the material id the plant